This weekend, I spent several hours of playing Flight Simulator 2024, the technical alpha. If you're interested in what my observations were, then this is the video for you. So let's start the intro and then let's look at the details. So the first thing I want to show you is really the start speed of Flight Simulator 2024, which is really amazing, right? So the majority of the time is really, I would say, this part of the screen, right, where it loads uh, the would say, prerequisites and starts launching the game, syncs your profile. And then once that has been done, right, it will show you the videos of Asobo logo. And then after that, you will be amazed how fast Flight Simulator will load because it's really extremely fast. That's one of my first observations. I was really thinking, wow, right? Because normally with Flight Simulator 2020, you need to uh, watch at all those screenshots. It will take a lot of time. And then uh, if you're unlucky and you just installed something new, then it will take even longer. Well, with Flight Simulator 2024, it's much faster. The only thing, as mentioned already, which takes long is starting that intro video. But since we're talking about the alpha release, I do hope that it will be fixed in the final release. That's something which I don't know, which only Asobo knows. Uh, but this is some, some feedback which I also heard from some other people uh, which, are, have, which do have access to the technical forums specifically for this technical alpha release. The thing is also, which is weird, is that I would say this uh, loading uh, icon, right? It doesn't show any progress, which is, I would say, kind of surprisingly. Uh, if you think, hey, it's your PC, well, I doubt because I've building the complete new rig for Flight Simulator 2024, which is, I would say, top-notch. Here you can see the uh, loading screen. It goes a little bit faster now, and hopefully we soon do get access or do see the video of uh, Asobo uh, showing up here. Right, once that's done, again, it will load extremely fast. So that was keeping me also thinking is, okay, hey, do they do some caching in the background here? Uh, unfortunately, I've been figured out, uh, or I, I haven't been able to figure this out, right? But that's one of my uh, the things I've been, been thinking about. Because you can see the Xbox logo, after that you will see the Asobo logo, uh, like now. And that will continue loading. And as you can see, the progress bar is already being displayed. And now look at the progress bar at how fast it is. Because it is, again, extremely fast, right? It will directly show this. It's the intro video. And then if we're lucky, we will be displayed the menu pretty fast. At least that was the initial times. You can see that the intro is a little bit stuttering, but now it's there, right? We can simply click start and then it shows you, okay, hey, this is are the release notes, right? Some functionalities are not available. Well, that's fine for us. And then it's there. So that brings me to the uh, second topic, right? Second topic is uh, you will be amazed how fast a flight loads. So what we will do now, to show that is click on free flight and the free flight we only have access to three aircrafts in this technical alpha right the boeing uh f-18 hornet the cup craft is x cup and the chestnut 172 skyhawk so i select this one because i like it uh, as you can see they also changed the marketplace but that's something which we're gonna in go into uh, a little bit further uh in this video so we're gonna zoom in or we can search right so in this case let me search uh, for rotterdam the hague airport so it's here and then we will zoom in uh, and that brings also in the nice details which you can see over here right this is so pretty cool because look at what happens now if i click now control enter or simply click the fly button you will see what happens uh, this will normally go pretty fast right so it will take some time before it loads but then it starts zooming into the map like now and it brings you to the aircraft which is standing in this case up uh, just on a taxiway, and then it will change. I do expect that the at first showing up in light mode and then moving to dark mode is a bug, but it could be, I would say, that they will fix that in the near future. So let's click ready to fly, right? And then you're there. And then you will be amazed by the beautiful Flight Simulator 2024, right? It acts pretty fast, right? You can also see that the level of detail here is pretty cool. Also, we've got a co pilot. And then there, there's that electronic flight back. So that's the next topic I want to discuss, right? The electronic flight pack. So either you can zoom in here, but I would say a nicer option is to click uh, on this one, which shows you the electronic flight pack in this mode, right? You can move around the map. You can also 
uh, move around uh, the uh, window here, but you can also expand it in let's say, a separate window. It makes it very useful if you've got multiple monitors, you can move it to a different monitor. So what you will see now is it's uh, located on the airport, but if you're located on the airport, right, you can also say, okay, hey, I want to have some more information. Any more information will bring up this window where it shows you the airport, it shows you the position, the elevation, but it also shows you the weather. For example, VFR is green, which means we can take off using VFR. It shows you the wind, the visibility, the clouds, the air pressure, the temperature. Uh, that's based on the meter data, but you can also switch to the tough meter, right? Tough data, right? Shows you the ability to switch to multiple hours and even you can advance to Let's say the weather predictions uh, for the coming hours or even days. Runways, as you would expect, right? It would uh, contain the runway information, including which one is recommended. In this case, uh, runway 24. It contains the length, the elevation, and also the type of runway. And then last but not least, of course, we've got the uh, frequencies. So for those who are familiar with, I would say, Navigraph, right? You can see some similarities. So I also really wonder what parties like Navigraph will do with this. Because as you can see, I can also move over to the map, right? To the map, I can simply, I would say, zoom out and then uh, go to the departures, go to the arrivals, and then simply select, okay, hey, I want to use this star, for example. Let's assume that we're gonna depart. In this case, uh, this could be the departure. And then by, Clicking on it, you will add it to the map, right? Uh, in this alpha release, you can't really click this button yet, but I do expect that it will be available in the uh, eventual release. Also, in the departures part, you can, uh, say, filter between runways, right? So in this case, departures, if there's no departure, you won't see anything, but if it was, I would say, applicable to both, then you can still select it here. Uh, also, I do think that this is data which will become more accurate uh, with the final release. Then of course we've got the arrivals, right? The standard terminal arrival routes, which also show the information over here from the airport, the approaches, uh, and several other things like the airport information and the miscellaneous maps. So temporary miscellaneous uh, procedures. So this is, I would say, a, I would say a huge improvement compared to what you have now, assuming that you don't have the Navigraph subscription, because if you have the Navigraph subscription, you already could benefit from these nice tools. Then on the bottom, we've got the uh, departures over here, right? We can see the uh, Andic, uh, the Arnium, uh, the, and then the different uh, approach or departure three per runway. So in this case, we're selecting a departure from runway 24, and then you can select the one which you prefer uh, and then click on this one, which should show the map. But again, this doesn't work in this version. But again, I do suspect that it will be fixed in the future versions once the release is there. Arrivals is the same, right? You can uh, click the items, uh, but unfortunately it didn't work 100% yet. But this looks already pretty promising, right? Then if we go to the uh, map itself, right? Which is the top icon, we can change the route. And based on that, you can add the departures and also add uh, waypoints. Then you can send the route to the avionics. Then you can request route from avionics. So those are things which will likely be added in the near future. You can select the flight details like, hey, hey, do I want to fly VFR or IFR? You can enter your registration information, your airline, call sign, your flight date, your uh, off block time, and then also several other things like the transponder code, uh, the flight uh, type, right? Scheduled, general, military, other, uh, or non-scheduled and you can uh, place a picture or pick name which stands for the uh, pilot name and then you can click on the builder i didn't try this on myself yet uh to be honest but i thought okay hey it looks pretty cool uh, so if you click on builder right you can see that the uh, remark builder and then it will build the remarks for you going back to this one right clicking on this icon again uh, you will see that in this case i can start typing here right echo hotel romeo delta and then we're going to echo hotel alpha mike to skip all airport then i can add a departure and then i can simply say direct or i can select one of the departures if you select one of them right you can see that uh, you've got uh let's say it's hard to see which one you need to pick but that's where this map icon comes into play where you can let's say use that one uh 
by default it's set to direct but if you click change procedure it will change the procedure in this case to in this case some to b by which is good then we can add an arrival route right but there, that again is optional if you don't want to do it you don't need to do it but here you can see how easy it is to plan a flight uh, from in this case rotterdam the hague airport to uh, schiphol airport uh, cruise altitude is set to 100 by default which looks a little bit low to me uh, so let me change that to uh, 2400 right or 2500 and then I you can see that it's also it's either set to feet or to flight level so depending on what you prefer you can configure that and then you uh, can add waypoints right so i can search by facility uh but this is i would say is kind of things which i would like to explore further but which is not available currently in the alpha release right because you likely want to i'd say really plan a flight uh, but that's likely this is the manual way of adding the route uh, to your uh, aircraft then once you're done you can say send route to avionics which will send it to the uh, aircraft itself and then you're good to go other things which you can configure here payload options right payload options you probably uh, would expect this in the world map but this has now been moved to this interface where you can change the zero fuel weight you can change the payload number of passengers the cargo and then uh, that's i would say up to you right if you prefer to do that if you want to make it realistic then you can do that but it's not a mandatory thing also the fuel options you can set either to rules or to uh, auto uh, again and there's not much documentation about this uh part yet but i do expect that if you click on the rules right you can change it to uh, the faa rules the european rules the manual rules or in this case auto which likely automatically figures out which rules it wants to apply to this flight or to this view contingency now we've got the stopwatch <clears throat> i would say in this case uh, it shows me all the beacons which are going to fly to right that's based on the uh, procedures which we selected and of course the starting uh, runway and in the arrival runway based on that will also show you okay hey what's the uh, eta what's the distance and then you can click start to start the navigation log last item is the clip charts where you can add items to the uh, clip chart to I'd say easily recognize them right you can also remove them uh, and that's based on the maps which you select here right so for example if i want to uh, add a specific arrival or a specific uh, approach then you can add it here then it will be added here to the uh, map and then likely in near future uh, once it's available you can click on this button and then it will show the information as you can see currently the flight map has been updated right with with some information uh, and you can see that it now has i would say created this nice flight plan for me although it's not really nice of course but this is really cool also in this one is the alerts button uh it's yellow by default also if there's no alert uh, so be aware of that nothing to worry about expect that these alerts will show up more uh, frequently uh, once you're flying then if you close it it will simply go to this mode and then if you close it again it will go to this mode uh, recent position replay options uh, is not what we need for now uh, but here you can see if you press escape what happens then right because this is also a pretty cool feature uh, it will show you the current flight so it will show you the departure the arrival uh, it will show you the remaining time which you need to do it shows you okay here what's the next uh waypoint and based on that it will say make kind of what say drone view but also shows you the uh say flight which you need to take right or the, the path which you need to take so in this case uh, you can see my aircraft standing here you can see also multiple points that's depending on the settings of course but that's also pretty nice the cool thing is that you can move or change to a free cam and the free cam allows you to move uh, move around right so you can simply move around here uh, you can uh, rotate and rotate the key uh, using these these keys right which gives you let's say pretty nice view over uh say the airport in this case so when i press k uh, let's see if i can uh, say change it again right so pretty nice stuff uh so this is kind of the drone view which we were uh, all knowing from say previous version of flight simulator 
and here you can uh, say start flying right you can start exploring the world even without let's say leaving your aircraft uh, or departing with your aircraft so once you're done right you can press escape and then it will bring you back to the uh, briefing which will get in, result in this nice view in this case it will take you back to the airport uh, where we are right and then it will take you to this one so that's also a pretty nice thing then going to the settings menu which also is completely revamped so the settings menu you can see all those small letters over here those are the uh, keys which you can use to quickly go to the menu uh, which makes it easier right so if i would press the e and the q i would be able to move around however during some testing i also figured out that it doesn't always work so likely there's some you know, room for improvement there in a general menu you will find all the settings which you were used to see in a general menu including the graphic settings uh, the graphic settings themselves they made it let's say now uh, expandable right it says okay hey frame rate target uh, uh, global rendering quality uh, but you can change this if you want there still is the I'd say preferred mode or the preferred uh, say uh, graphic settings if you go to this one right the global running quality is set to ultra so by default it's figuring out those settings uh out of the box so if you start flight simulator for the first time it will try to figure out which settings should be applied and that's good uh, this one is a frame rate target used by the dynamic settings so if you use the dynamic settings which is kind of weird because there's only one setting over here it's set to 30 right but you can increase it if you want uh, you can increase it to in this case the maximum frame rate of your uh, screen which is uh, 120 but that's now for now keep it to 30 because i'm not sure what the effect will be because there's not much information as you can see then going down to the global rendering quality here we see everything which you would expect right including the uh, trees the plants the rocks are new uh, the grass is there uh, the object level of detail uh, the uh, vol volumetric clouds the uh, any any so traffic or filtering and a lot of other cool things so even though you set uh the setting to ultra right the water waves are still set to high so you can decide to change that now uh, same thing is applicable for the wind effects also set to high by default even if you're setting the settings to uh ultra as well as the uh glass cockpit pr uh refresh rate also set to uh, high uh these are would say kind of <clears throat> placeholders it looks like um, but these are likely need to get their official name uh, so those kind of bugs are reported already back to us so we'll then we've got the language but if it's set to uh, the system language which you have uh, you can also change it to the authentic ATC language right it adjusts the language spoken by the air ATC uh, control when flying internationally you can change that uh, I'm not sure what the effect will be but you can change that you can uh, switch on the uh, subtitles to make it easier for you uh, depending on what you prefer as well as change the uh, unit of measurement uh, going to the uh, sound options that's where you see all the things uh, which you were used to however these options the uh, headphone simulation uh, i do think it's new as well as the 3d audio as well as the listening mode right so listening mode can now be changed to either tv hi-fi uh, headphones or home uh, and uh, do i say depending on which system you're playing you can change it uh, i do think this is more related to the xbox but i would say in this case i will leave it to tv which is recommended when using built-in tv speakers however what's kind of weird is if you would play on the pc version then i would like to have a different mode here uh, but i'm not sure if they will change it uh, but it's kind of weird Mute audio in the background was already there, and then we've got the multiple uh, volumes uh, per, uh, say, type, right? Aircraft, warnings, other aircraft, environment, etc. Online, hasn't changed as many, right? All the, those options are there. Uh, we can change the uh, voice chat, which allows you to uh, allow incoming and outgoing text chat when in a group of users. Uh, you can change the uh, push to talk option. You can change the microphone sensitivity and other things as well as the data consumption right here you can see the data consumed uh, data tracking uh, reset days number one data limitations if they are applicable that's mainly applicable if you play it let's say and you've got a let's say kind of 
fair use policy, or not a fair use policy, I should say, but a hard limit for your bandwidth use for your ISP. Uh, rolling cache, by default set to 16 gigabyte. That's probably due to the fact that they have more server dependencies, so more in the cloud. So that's why they also recommend to leave this one on, because if you would switch it off and there would be a hiccup somewhere, then you will likely experience an issue directly. Then the camera options, uh, camera selection, right? This is the default mode. It's the uh, cockpit. You've got the quick view, uh, which allows you to use the quick view options, hold the input to enter the quick view mode, right? Release the input or reset the point of view. We've got the smart cameras. We've got the zoom function. Uh, and we've got the focus mode. And those are the things which you uh, can change, of course. Uh, the focus mode, right? Sets uh, the default behavior for the focus mode. In this case, uh, the toggle. Uh, and that means that you tap the input uh, once to enter the focus mode or simply enter a key or something. Uh, zoom function enables the focus mode, right click to zoom into the center of the screen. Smart camera mode, we already knew it. And a quick view mode uh, also allows you to quickly change to different views. Then the cockpit camera, by default it sets to wide uh, angle, but you can also change it to uh, landing, uh, close or hot mode depending on what you prefer right so if you for example want to uh, perform a landing then you can change it to the landing mode uh, but normally you would say the wide angle mode is good enough uh, close mode is positioning the camera really close to the cockpit's board allows you to have a good view of the instruments free look mode the toggle <clears throat> free look, look reset mode as well as the head up mode and then say several other settings like the zoom, uh, the flash light mode, etc. But those are all settings which you likely want to adjust uh, yourself. There, there's no best practice around this. Instrument view mode, right? To switch to the instrument view mode, as well as how to select the instruments uh, view mode, which is set to manually, just like you, you don't want to use it. The external camera view mode and the first person mode. So a lot of camera settings, as you can see. Traffic, aviation traffic, real-time online. This hasn't changed that much, right? Here you can change the number of boats, the number of airport uh, vehicles, ground air aircraft density, worker density, fauna density. Uh, and then also you can switch on the AI and multiplayer traffic detail, right? So use generic aircraft models uh, for AI traffic. But here there are, there are settings which are applicable to the uh, multiplayer mode want to change that flight model i think uh, the gyro is new uh, and it's by default set to modern by the way uh, and likely that that's good enough for you uh, normally then we've got the flight interface and the flight interface really okay showing landmarks that's what we just sh show right all those labels there so you can switch them on or off and you can see you can switch them off for uh, lead marks, but also city markers, uh, airport markers, and they show the free flight pins. And then there's the white dot cursor in the free look, uh, which was in 2020. It was at one time it was a bug, but they now made an option to switch it on or off. The cockpit view mode, instrument heads up display, cockpit cam is switched on, and then the different modes, right? So if you want to say see only a label on it, or if you also want to see the description of that specific instrument. External camera mode is uh, full. Then the advanced options. Those are more for, let's say, reporting issues, but also adding multiple windows, but also to uh, use the experimental tools, right? So the replay tool, the package reorder tool, and the allow third person uh, view camera. That one was discussed in one of the uh, developer webcasts that's now also available uh, as an experimental tool. And then, of course, we've got the legal and credits. And here you can see it. Okay, there's still some work to do over here. That was a general menu, right? So the assistant menu, uh, it contains a lot of options uh, which allow you to, uh, say, get help, right, from uh, from an assistant. If you uh, switch over the, those options, right, you can say all assist, uh, default assist, and the default assist can be customized. Uh, and that's what I did. Uh, so if you switch to default assist and then, let's say, for example, uh, accept all the settings, then you can do that but if you don't like to have these options right you can simply uh, switch them off and then it will become a custom mode which is i would say uh, nice 
only applied in a free flight. You've got the option to uh, disable the crash mode, the aircraft stress and engine stress. You can uh, enable the icing effect. A limited view can be enabled. I wouldn't do it if I were you. And the turbulence and G effect, right? So the turbulence is new where you can experience turbulence. It's set by default to realistic. And the G effect is set by, def by default to, uh, to jet pilot. And you can switch it to civil aviation by the way. That has to do with the G force which is put on the pilot. Likely you want to put it like this if you're fi flying one of those uh, military aircrafts, but else I would set it to either civil aviation or maybe even to off. So once you've done that, you can press escape, right? And then save the settings. This option also new, it's the ATC Enforced Flight Plan, which allows you to, uh, that the ATC will directly follow the flight plan which you configured, right? Uh, so regardless, here it says, regardless of the weather, it will follow your flight plan. If you disable it, the ATC will decide the active runway and approach. So if you want to make it more realistic, uh, based on, let's say, the uh, weather and the performance, you can switch this one off. If you want to enforce it to use your procedures, then you can switch it on. Then we're coming over to the uh, devices and the controllers. So there are a lot of changes there, right? So first of all, you've got, in this case, the keyboard and the mouse in my case, and the controller, the Xbox controller. Then you've got the general uh, controls and the airplane air controls. But below that, you can see that there is a Chestnut, uh, specific Chestnut 172 Skyhawk controls, which allows you to configure, I would say, key bindings or functions specifically for the Skyhawk 172. And this is new to Flight Simulator. Uh, and I would say that will allow you to customize it per aircraft type, which sounds a cool idea. I'm not sure how it will be, I would say, when it's uh, GA, right? General available, which means on the 19th of November. But this looks a really nice option. Uh, what you, can you do here, right? You can change it to none. You can change it, uh, let's say, uh, in this case, not to none. But you need to select one of those items. If you select the keyboard, you will see that it has different options and the controller uh, by default has the gamepad 2024. And um, based on that, you can switch the controllers, right? For, for example, uh, aileron, right? <clears throat> you can see, okay, hey, which kinds are bound to that? Uh, the good thing about this is that it works on the Xbox controller. The bad thing is it doesn't work in this alpha release for the other controllers. But likely that's a limitation of the alpha release uh, because I tried to use it using the Velocity 1 joystick and there I need to set up everything, which was, I would say, a lot of work, but eventually it worked also. Hopefully that will be fixed in the final release. <clears throat> now we've got the accessibility options. The accessibility options, right? You can switch on the screen narrator, which will tell you everything audio, right? If I would switch it on and I hit uh, escape save back, it will tell me everything which is uh, being illuminated, which I'm selecting. That's to make it easier for people who are having, let's say, issues reading the screen, explaining where they are with their mouse cursor. Also subtitles can be switched on, but also the size of the subtitles as well as the background can be changed. And the effects and options can also be changed here, right? So the controller vibration, the camera shake. So a lot of good things which make it possible to for everybody to play flight simulator, right? Or almost everybody. Then the VR mode, it's currently disabled, but that's part of the uh, technical alpha. In the eventual version, it should be available. So once you're happy, you can click escape and save back, right? And then we're at this screen again. Uh, so what are other options, right? So let's, let's return to the main menu, uh, which is also cool view. So there are two options here. You can go to the uh, challenge league, uh, the challenge league uh, contains uh, weekly challenges, uh, week three uh, ranking, right? And then you can, for example, say, okay, hey, I want to fly the uh, rally race. You can get some more info about it. And this will change on a weekly base. You can see that currently it's 12 hours uh, until the end of the week. That's cool. The other thing is the career mode. And the career mode allows you to, let's say, get your flight certification. This is, let's say, really cool, right? So here it says, okay, hey, I already tried it, of course, so I can't see, show it from scratch. But based on your, I would say, uh, first flight, you will have the ability to head to the certifications to pass your uh, PPL, right? So you can say, okay, hey, show me what you can do. And these are the uh, 
let's say flight instructions which you get or flight certifications you can get right so first you will need to start with the private pilot license which will cost you 10,000 uh, credits and you can see that by default you've got 40,000 so I'm really wondering if you can buy them or if there's another way to increase it because by default you will start with 40,000 credit, uh, credits Based on what I understood is that you can earn more credits if you would say are passing certain missions, doing certain missions. And there you can see that you can either go to the right side, which allows you to fly helicopters, right? Even up to hoisting and endorsements, airline transport pilot, uh, power lift, or you can move to the left side, which allows you to uh, proceed with the commercial flight license, which will eventually go to multi-engine, uh, instrument rating, jet engine rating, and then the turbo props are here. Also, if we look at the bottom, uh, which might be a little bit hard to see, is the scoop endorsements. And here we've got the heavy uh, airliner rating, which is I would say, containing those really large aircrafts, right? So pretty cool that they have added this. Uh, so if you want to proceed, simply click this mode and then you can start. Uh, so I think with that, we covered most of the items, uh, which is, I would say, which are new to Flight Simulator, right? Uh, which is uh, cool. Uh, this is the overview of the technical alpha, right? So some of the things weren't working that well. Other things worked a lot better. Uh, I would say what I liked a lot was the performance. The performance is, I would say, really good. The starting time of the, your flights are really, really fast. Uh, and I would say the level of detail is cool. What I didn't like is, let's say, for example, the number of ships. If I look at the number of ships, especially flying over large cities, it's unrealistic. There are all cruise ships everywhere, um, but likely that's due to the fact that it's the technical alpha release. So hopefully they will fix that uh, eventually. Uh, other things than that, I don't think so. I would say you can play World Photographer if you want, right? Uh, go to the maps. Uh, and you can also see some some pickles here, right? So that's also likely a technical off issue. Uh, but that's that. And with that, we're at the end of this video where I showed you several items which will be included in Flight Simulator 2024. This was based on the alpha test, right? The technical alpha uh, test, which made a solo Microsoft uh, able to test their backend systems. Uh, they also already mentioned that several items like the marketplace were not there by default and also a limited number of aircrafts, but it was still pretty cool to play this one, uh, I would say, prior to the official release. So I can't wait till this version of Flight Simulator will be available at the 19th of November. If you also played it and you want to share your feedback, then feel free to do that in the comment box below. I'm really wondering how you uh, experienced it. I thought it was pretty cool, although I, I experienced multiple crashes, but that's another thing. Uh, so leave a comment in the comment box uh, about your experience uh, and keep an eye on my channel because I will likely post some more videos about Flight Simulator 2024 pretty soon. Thanks for watching and hope to see you back pretty soon next time after you likely played Flight Simulator 2024 sometime.